So in the second section of our lecture, we talked about some uh, screening procedures and also we talked about the distraction techniques and some reflexes, mainly which shows us the behavioral responses of infant as a result of uh, uh, different sounds or auditory responses presented to them. Now, in this section, we will talk about some conditioning and objective test of the hearing. So in this, we will talk about the visual reinforcement audiometry. Then we will talk about play and speech audiometry and then some objective tests. Conditioning techniques. In conditioning technique, we have visual reinforcement audiometry and also we have uh, play audiometry. In visual reinforcement audiometry, the uh, audiometry is uh, reinforcement by vision and usually the uh, PC is used to procreate any um, images and uh, in, in front of the infant and they different uh, they have some uh, like um, they see some object or they see some picture in the computer and then uh, the uh, the examiner usually present with something like uh, a light or flashing light so the child can um, condition to condition the infant so they can get used to this technique so once they visualize the the picture on the uh, TV or computer, automatically they want to perform the same action the uh, examiner did. So this is just uh, audiometry in which is reinforced by vision technique. So this is visual reinforcement audiometry and in this instead of headphones on the head the small uh, uh, probes are inserted into the infant ear they see the picture and then they want to perform the same action and they form the same procedure done by the examiner. So in this, the audiometry is uh, uh, reinforced by vision also. Then in the other play audiometry is a very, very uh, good method, especially uh, in children who are grown up. And then uh, first the examiner explained to the ch child that, okay, when you hear the sound, pick up the toy and put it in the uh, hole or whatever they have in front of them. If they have a Lego, uh, put the pick up the leg uh, one and then put it on the, uh, make some building and construct something. So that's how once they hear the sound, they keep on playing the games and put the uh, to uh, toys on the different uh, holes. So this is play audiometry, helps to find out when the child here, they keep on uh, going to play. Then the speech audiometry is another type of uh, conditioning technique in which uh, the examiner talk and they want the person to repeat the words the examiner said and then uh, this can uh, tell that they can understand the word properly and they can uh, say it ag again. So this is speech audiometry which can tell whether if the hearing is normal or if the speech recognition or word discrimination, speech discrimination is normal or not. Then the objective tests. Objective tests we have evoked response audiometry also known as uh, electrocochleography and then we have ABR auditory brainstem response. Both in evoked response audiometry, uh, the uh, sound is introduced into the uh, 
uh, ear and then uh, the recording of the cochlea is obtained on the graph and this gives us the if the hearing is normal or not and then auditory brain stem response auditory brain stem response it also tells us whether the um, acoustic reflex is normal or not. Acoustic reflex mainly tells us if it's the acoustic pathway is for the cranial nerve uh, 7, 8 and also of uh, auditory um, nucleus. So here the sound is uh, uh, produced and then there is a recording and we have waves one to five. All these waves, wave one is produced by uh, eighth cranial nerve. Then we have uh, again wave two, eighth nerve. Then we have third wave is by the uh, uh, cochlear nucleus or uh, then we have superior uh, olive free complex lateral lemiscus so all this can gives us if the uh, hearing is normal or if the brain stem response to the audit auditory stimulus is normal or not again auto acoustic emissions auto acoustic emissions is done when hearing Ex loss exceed 30 decibel. We have two types. Transient evoked emission is absent if the hearing loss is more than 30 decibels. And then if it's more than 50 decibels, we have distortion product emissions are absent. So auto acoustic emission we have if it's up to 30 decibels or 50 decibels. If 30 decibels, we have a, a transient evoked emission is absent. And when hearing loss exceeds 50 decibel, then distortion product emissions are absent. Impedance audiometry. Uh, impedance audiometry is uh, again mainly perform to find out the efficiency of middle ear also known as tympanometry and in which um, the uh, a probe is inserted with three uh, uh, hands we have the oscillator we have a uh, air pressure pump and then we have microphone a oscillation produce the sound then at the same time we have the pressure pump in which the air is inserted into the ear and then the waves that are reflected by the tympanic membrane they are recorded and this gives us a graph in which we find out that the most maximum is at the level of zero when the pressure in the middle ear and the atmosphere is same. So this is impedance audiometry or tympanometry in which stapedius muscle contracts reflexly and absence of acoustic reflex is mainly due to middle ear disorder, retrocochlear hearing loss or severe there is profound sensory neural hearing loss. All these can lead to absence of acoustic reflux. So that was all about the conditioning and some objective tests for the assessment of hearing. Thank you for watching scardia.com.